If you're considering a Disney Cruise family vacation and have a toddler, you may be wondering what accommodations does Disney make for small children? Will there be enough activities to keep my children entertained and engaged? What challenges should I expect? My wife and I recently got back from a three-night Bahama cruise with our extended family and our two-year-old son, Wesley, and our four-year-old daughter, Sadie. This was our first ever Disney cruise, and if you have young children like us, you may be wondering, should I take my toddler on a Disney cruise? Hi, this is Ben and Brittany, and these are the 10 things we wish we would have known before boarding a Disney cruise with our toddler. First, you may not need a passport for children 15 years of age and younger. For U.S. citizens, children 15 years of age or younger need only an original or copy of their state-issued birth certificate. This passport exception applies to your children when your cruise starts at a United States port, travels only to select international locations, Canada, Mexico, Bahamas, or Caribbean, and returns to the same U.S. port. It is always recommended to bring a passport if your child already has one. And of course, you'll want to confirm this information for your specific cruise. Be prepared for some long waits and long lines in some areas. Getting on and off the ship can take some time at the ports. This is particularly true on the first and final days where you have to produce your tickets, IDs, and passports. These lines were the longest at about 45 minutes to an hour. Disembarking at the other ports was much quicker, about 20 minutes on and off. What really helped us was bringing our foldable wagon with us, which not only transported our kids, but contained them. In longer lines, we recommend having snacks and an iPad to keep them entertained. The formal dinners were fantastic, but definitely a challenging time for parents with toddlers, as the dinners lasted about an hour and a half to two hours each night. The food can take a while to bring out, and while they do prioritize the children's meals and bring out crayons and paper to entertain the kids, this only helps so much. Having an iPad with games and shows on it definitely was helpful, and a few of the nights the crews had some dinner entertainment that did briefly distract them. However, looking back, we might have planned the nursery time for our son during these dinners, and that would be our recommendation for parents with fidgety children like our son. Things you can expect to find in the room that we found helpful for toddlers. There is a curtain divider to separate the room and block out light from one side of the room, a tub, bunk beds for kids with guardrails in place on top and by request on the bottom bunk. There is a blackout curtain in front of the window if you have a porthole to the outside. The following are by request ahead of time in the app. A diaper genie in the room, a crib, which is a pack and play, a high chair at dinner service, and Disney Plus is available in all the rooms. This one is kind of obvious, but we didn't realize until we got to the cruise and it was great for downtime entertainment for the kids. Disney has great daycare programs and amenities. On day one of the cruise, all the kids clubs and daycare programs host an open house and allow parents and children to explore the facilities. The staff are really friendly and the play areas are incredible. Dropping your kids off at any of these programs is really doing them a favor. For ages three and under, It's a Small World Nursery has limited space and it's recommended but not required to book your daycare ahead of your cruise to secure the times you may want. It's on a first come first serve basis. Also the nursery charges a small hourly fee. It was $9 an hour at the time of filming. We were pleasantly impressed and surprised to find that the children's pools weren't too crowded. Same goes for the splash pad on the top deck. We should say that we did a three day cruise where there were no days at sea, so they might be more crowded on a day at sea. There are a few water slides that have height requirements that attracted older kids and these seem to always have longer lines. Also there was no lap sitting on these larger water slides, so our two year old and four year old were not able to ride the bigger slides but our kids seemed quite happy and content with the kiddie pools and splash pad. Be prepared for some long walks. 
If you plan to get off the ship and explore the destinations of your cruise, definitely expect a lot of walking. With a toddler, you're going to want to make sure you bring your stroller or wagon. We can't say this enough, but a wagon was invaluable to us on this trip. At Nassau, just to get off the ship and walk to the closest street took about 20 minutes. It took another 20 minutes to walk to the closest beach. If one of your ports is Disney's private island, Castaway Cay, there is an option to take a trolley to the beach, which will save you about a half a mile of walk. One of our ports was Disney's private island, Castaway Cay. This port was the highlight of the trip for our children. They loved playing on the beach, the water was clear and warm, and there was plenty of space to spread out. The highlight of the cruise for me was renting a bike and doing a 5k loop around the island and they had toddler seats available on the bike. Our 4 year old and 2 year old could both fit in the seats comfortably. There are also bikes with training wheels available. It was also amazing to be on a private island with only those from the cruise. You could leave your diaper bag or stroller wagon in one place on the beach all day. We left our stuff unattended on the beach when we went to get lunch and when we went on the bike ride. Of course you'll want to do this at your own risk though. And be sure to enjoy the self-serve ice cream and soda machines around the island. The dinner service for kids is your basic kid food, which our toddlers welcomed. For kids, you can expect to see pizza, spaghetti, chicken nuggets, and chocolate milk on the menus. We love that all the kids' drinks were served in a cup with a straw. Breakfast and lunch is buffet style with lots of food options at different locations on the ship. You can also get room service at no extra charge. So this next one might seem obvious, but be sure to bring your children's medication. There is a doctor and medical staff to talk to if your kids get sick. Our nephew needed some basic medication that the ship didn't have at the moment. So just be sure to bring all medications. Side tip, basic toiletries are free if you forget them. You just need to go to the customer service desk. Each night on the ship, there's live theater entertainment, which is great for adults and kids alike. But it's still hard to capture a two-year-old's attention for very long. On our ship, we saw Aladdin, Captain Goofy, and The Little Mermaid. Our four-year-old loved watching the shows. All the shows were kept to an hour or less, and she was able to sit through the entirety of them. Our two-year-old, on the other hand, sat through about 20 minutes on one show and only made it about five minutes on another night's show. We decided ahead of the show who would be the designated parent who would leave with our son if he got a little too out of hand. Overall, we had a fantastic time on our first Disney cruise. Our kids loved it. We felt like Disney thought of so many details to make this trip enjoyable for toddlers and parents alike. We look forward to the next one.